Black Out Radio 247. You're live in the mix. I'm your host, Twism White Peace. And you, of course, are in with us today as we bring you a wonderful interview with my man, Mike Wagner. Mr. Wagner, how are you doing today? Hey, I'm doing great, Twism White Peace, my friend. I'm doing fantastic. How have you been? Oh, man, been blessed. It's been so hot here. Been doing nothing but staying inside in the air conditioning. How about yourself? Ah, we're getting some natural air conditioning up in uh, Bismarck, North Dakota, where at times we still have the air on. But we've had a few days that we had about 90 plus, And I think maybe a couple weeks ago, we hit 97, 98. And we're ready to melt like like hot butter on popcorn, I'll tell you. <laughs> so, oh, well, my of course, goodness. Man, Mr. Oof, is that an echo on your part? No, I'm not hearing echoes. It's like unless I have an evil twin. Mm, I'm hearing an echo. That's okay, though. We'll keep it moving. Uh, so you, of course, are the host of the Mike Wagner Show, and that being one of the one of the most popular shows that I see right now. Of course, being in the social media circles that I run in, you're interviewing people of all kinds, and of course, you've interviewed me, and you've interviewed some other celebrities and some other famous up and coming people. What does it feel like? And tell us exactly your thoughts on being thrusted into the limelight the last couple of weeks and months? Well, I have to say it's that I've been preparing this for quite some time, and I've interviewed over 300 people, and the list keeps growing and growing. And basically, for me, it's just like, you know, after a while of just getting through a rough period, you know, it's like you're a little scared and, um, you know, just being in intimidated. After a while, it feels like you're talking to a friend. And, and basically, it's almost like you're talking to a regular person who gets up in the morning, gets dressed, has a coffee, and um, goes to work, does their job, come home, and um, gets hugs and kisses from, uh, from family, play with the kids, come home to your lovely wife. And also, if you're single, you go out with friends, have a good time. And of course, for, for some who are just isolated, just come home and um, rest up and um, have a meal. Everybody goes back to bed and... Everybody does the same thing. So I've prepared this for quite some time. And I have to say one thing is that um, I seem to enjoy what I do. And I feel like I've been called upon to do it. It's getting to know people on a regular basis and getting to know people what they actually do. And it, it's almost like just being one on one and just having a cup of coffee and a casual conversation with a friend, just like I'm doing with right now with you. Exactly. Exactly. So, uh, you know, boy, that feedback, boy, I tell you. Uh, I, sometimes I feel like, uh, you know, as a radio host, we uh, uh, get ourselves put into a, um, a routine um, and, you know, it, it almost becomes um, second nature. Um, now, have you always been the radio broadcast or was there other, um, uh, uh, other primary jobs before that? Well, I've always been in broadcasting for about, you know, 35 years, but to supplement that, I have actually done some other work just to keep myself going, and I've done other jobs just to, um, you know, keep up with the bills fam and feed the family, and, you know, there are times to keep up with the Joneses, but I've done just about everything in Madrid. I've done voiceover work, and I've also done some um, commercials, and I've done some uh, other shows, and I've been on other radio stations. I've did some audio books and I'd venture into other areas of uh, broadcast. And yeah. I've yeah. also taken on some other work and I was going to be actually a sports writer growing up because I'm a big uh, Chicago fan. You know, growing up in Chicago, although I was born in Milwaukee and being a Packer fan. So it's like, I've been wanting to be um, a sports writer, but then I felt like my work didn't stand out. And I did, did a little play by play and, you know, sports casting, I was going to pursue, but then I got bored with that quickly. I changed over the music. I did news and whatever else. And that's just been a great ride. And I've learned not to um, be pigeonholed and everything else and just keep myself going in every aspect possible. So my advice to everybody is don't be content. Just keep branching out and branching out and branching out. Never, never, uh, never close a, close a door on opportunities, right? Always pretty, take, always pretty, mu opportunities. Pretty, pretty much. Yeah. And of course, um, just, just have yourself open to opportunities. You never know what's going to lead. And if something goes wrong, well, there, there's probably a lesson learned. It wasn't meant for you. You just pick up your feet and just move on. I like it. I like it. I like it. So along those philosophies, how did the uh, how did the Mike Wagner show come into play? Now, you said you, you've, you've done all these things. So is this something you started yourself or was this something that... You know, obviously you started yourself. I mean, let me let me rephrase that. Was this something that you started yourself as a choice 
or was this something that you started just in the mix of everything else and it kind of just worked itself out to be its own entity? I, I think in a sense it's kind of both because I felt there was something missing in my career where when it comes to interviews, it's almost like, okay, um, I've done this, I've done that, and whatever else. And it, it's almost like, okay, um, something is wrong, something's missing. Yeah. And, you know, I've, I've had a little bad experience with interviews, you know, way back in the day where I just get run over or just smart comments and everything else. But as time went on, I started learning it myself. And I practiced before starting the Mike Wagner show with some people. And I realized, hey, I am good at this. You know, I took some friends and there was um, a guy that worked with um, Guy Ritchie and worked on one of the films in London. And I also did one with a sports guy, Vince Evans from the Chicago Bears, just kind of broke in and it felt good to talk to a guy who turned out to be a regular person, good Christian guy and whatever else. And then this all came about while we're vacationing with family in the Black Hills in South Dakota. And as I ventured and I looked around and said, there's got to be something missing and fulfilling. And I talked to one of the guys and I kind of said to myself that I'm going to have a show where I just interview people, all kinds, celebrities, upcoming stars and has-beens and and Hall of Famers, regular people, and also business owners, writers, and people like yourself, and children, and everything is just all walks of life, and and, and I just also looked at, it's like, this is something I've been wanting to venture, a little bit of a podcast, just spread all over the nation and the world, and I just wanted to just kind of run my own ship, that's what I want to do, just run my own ship, and just take it to where it's been, as it turned up, I'm just getting blasted like crazy. You know, people want to come to my show and then I get thanks. And I said, you know what? I think this has been my mission. It's almost like it's practically fulfilled, but I'm not going to stop there. Just keep going and going and going and going. Ever since. Ever since. Correct. Yes. <laughs> okay, okay. So uh, <clears throat> let's see. You, you, you being a Chicago fan, I, I, I got I to gotta know what you think about Frank Thomas. Frank Thomas. I have to say this. Although I'm a Cub fan, he, he's been like a White Sox fan, White Sox guy, true and true. You know, watching him come up from the minors and hit like 500 home runs and talking to people. And they, they he lives in a ritzy western suburb neighborhood with the likes of Bo Jackson. And I think he also lived with, um, oh, I'm trying to think of a couple of people. There are guys from the Chicago Bears that live there. And people talking to Frank Thomas said, Frank Thomas is actually one of the nicest people that you'll ever, ever meet. You know, just a regular person. And you go into the store, he's like, hey, how's it going? You know, that's how I like to be viewed as just a regular person. And when I talk to people, you know, I just like him say that, hey, just a regular guy. And just like to sit down and have a conversation, say hi, what's up and everything else. You know, not put yourself on a pedestal because you get too easily knocked off once you're grounded. It's too hard to get knocked off. But Frank Thomas, I got to say this. It's like, although I'm a Cub fan, he's one of the best uh, players I have watched throughout my lifetime as well, too. 500 I, home I, runs and all. Amazing. Yeah, I know. I, I, uh, I uh, grew up in the uh, Midwest, and Indianapolis, you know, Indiana area. And uh, Indianapolis didn't really have a baseball team to speak of. Mm -hmm. um, I think we have like a like a like a, what is it a, a minor league team or something like that, um, but the 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 local fan team was uh, the Chicago White Sox. So uh, I would sit and I would watch him just belt out home run after home run, and I was like, man, you know, if I could play baseball, I'd want to play it just like him, right? <laughs> uh, and, and, and do you remember Bo Jackson too playing yeah. for the Sox? Oh yeah, Bo Jackson's amazing. It's like yes. you team the two guys up and. They made a heck of a run, you know, almost deep in the playoffs. And 94, they had a great chance to do it. And all of a sudden, it's like the strike hit, and everybody's like, oh, crap. I think I think, I think, think uh, Chicago was on fire because you had Jordan with, with, the early, early, uh, with the early set of uh, uh, the Bulls. What was it? Horace Grant and, and all of them. Um, and then you had uh, uh, Chicago doing their thing with, with Frank Thomas and everything. Uh, Chicago that year was on fire. Uh, I remember my grandma and grandfather were trying to convince my uncle to take me to one of the games in Chicago. And, of course, he wasn't having nothing to do with it. You know, Chicago back then wasn't kind of the friendliest place to be at, right? So, mm -hmm. um, 
but yeah, I, I remember those years like those that that was the highlight of my summers. Those years was just like watching the games and, uh, you know, Chicago versus Indiana and things like that. It was just fun. It was fun. It was I remember a lot of good memories about those guys. Right. Mm hmm. Yeah, and definitely a lot of fun, too. And I went to the earlier days, like in the 70s, where it's like that, the old Comiskey Park, where it's like, you know, in, in, in like in early April, it, it, it gets so cold. And my, my dad and I went to a game and played against Baltimore, where I perched in the, um along like, not in the bleachers, but in the right field area, which is like close to foul pole. Yeah, the wind just whipping through. And yeah, it was yeah, like, yeah. I went watching a baseball game. Feels like football. We're just huddled up in blankets and bring like a thermos. And I also remember going to a game with, um, you know, some friends and watching the Blue Jays. And here I was, the pole was right here. It was like pitcher here, batter here. It was like this throughout the game, just going back and forth. Here I am. It's like, how'd you like the game? <laughs> I got, my neck is sore. <laughs> <laughs> but that was just magical, though. Comiskey, it's like, you know, really good seats. And, and of course, you know, free beer. Harry Carey just singing up a storm oh, with the yeah, fall yeah, staff. Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> and he's like, everybody get loaded. And he'd be drinking fall staff and sneaks yeah, Budweiser yeah. in just throughout the game. And then he had a shower in center field where everybody just goes in, you know, pulls on a lever and shower. And during the time it was cold, my dad goes, hey, I want you to go in that shower. And goes, you first. <laughs> oh my gosh good old Chicago uh, White Sox I tell you it, 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 it brings a lot of uh, I, and like I said like because I grew up in the Midwest a lot of uh, a lot of <clears throat> early childhood memories are based upon a lot of Chicago based stuff so it's good to be able to to, to talk to somebody who has the same kind of uh, love for the Chicago sports team right so uh, oh moving, yeah. yeah moving on moving on um, so <clears throat> You've got the show now, and and you've moved your way up, and like you said, you've got some really big names, and 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 you feel at this moment that this is what you're supposed to be doing, and you're you're where you're supposed to be. However, do you feel though that there might be some uh, progression in the future towards a different direction, or do you feel like you kind of want to, you know, marinate in this for a while and allow it to to really soak in? I, I think in a sense, I like to go in a different direction, but for now, I want to marinate it and keep going and going and going and going until I start discovering a possible different direction. Right now, I'm going with the adage is, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And right That's now, bad. I've gotten a groove where I just keep going and going and going. And if I feel in my system, if I need to change it up a little bit, I'll do so. I'll make a few changes here or there, but not radical at this point. But I think right now, it's just like, you know, I, I'm still having people come to me and everything like that, or I'll reach out to them, but it's mainly people coming and it's all been word of mouth where I've had people come over and, and ask them, how'd you find out about my show? And they said, oh, I've listened through somebody. And it's almost like a network or a web keeps going, going down all the way through. And I discovered that I've had five people get on my show and they say, oh, I heard you talk to Lorraine Landon. I'm like, really? I mean, that's been so common. And I'd say this, she was one of the best guests I've had on the show. And Lorraine is just fantastic. I'll tell she you, big shout to Lorraine Landon. Of course, big shouts out to all of all of that crew. I mean, not just you know Lorraine, but uh, you've got you've got Jimmy, you've got Ron, you've got you've got uh, uh, Joseph Kelly, you've got um, so many of them. I seen you just interviewed Mickey Burns. Um, I mean, there's. A plethora of people involved in that circle that are absolutely amazing and you know I find that once you get yourself started on a good path with some good people it kind of just seems to lead more and more into you know good people and they so I, I really believe a lot we was talking last time with the classy not trashy idea mm -hmm. and, and I like how you kind of uh, you kind of back that up too I see I see how your stuff is always so so nice so great you know what i mean you look at it and you're like wow that's that's an interview i could want to listen to whereas some of these interviews out here you look at them and they're like what why why, why does that even matter you know what i mean so right. uh, i commend you for for always keeping it classy and not trashy i'm really big on that so well, i i greatly appreciate that and thank you very much you've got a great thing going as well too and keep it going also a couple of shout outs as well too to eileen shapiro who's yes. um just been fantastic and control show for carol yes she just dropped a new book eileen just dropped a new book mm -hmm. yeah waiting for adam and uh she's yeah. coming up um Later in the month as well, too, later on. And Kadrosha Ono Carol will be my season three opener in August. 
And, and I mean, they're just fantastic. Love having it back. Did I'd love to have you back on too. Did you get it? Oh yeah, we'll definitely do that. Did you get a chance to see the, the comic book? Um, I got to see glimpses of it, but, and I have to say this, it's like, you know what? That's the next thing I have on my bucket list. You just reminded me. What's be that? in a comic book. Oh, I know. Oh, right? my. <laughs> that's, that's a new one. Yeah. Be in a comic book. So people can just laugh. You know, that's what comic books for. For laughs, right? They can laugh at me in comics. <laughs> I also I also wanna I also want to um voice a Disney character. I think that, oh. that would be, I think that would be amazing. I, I think uh because you know I have that voice, like I have a voice, you know, but it's it's one of those, especially when I put on that fantastic, amazing radio voice and get to talk and all superfluous, people like they like everybody's like, Man, you should be in something that has to do with talking and Oh. Of all the things I know of, I think the only one I'd really actually appreciate in life would be a Disney voice character. You know, I, now, now are you talking like um, a, a similar Disney character, or have like create your own Disney character? Oh, I, either way. I mean, I, I, you know, I can do different voices, and and that's one of the little hidden secrets that I like to keep hidden about me. But like, I could definitely do uh, a, an already done character. Like, I do, I do Stitch from Lilo and Stitch. Oh. So yeah, so I mean, I love Lilo and Stitch. Yeah, I had me too, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh my and, god! And, but I also do I think a lot you got of, that one. <laughs> I also do a lot of uh, like Western and Russian, and and I try to experiment with different voices. So I I really think that if it, if it was in my best interest, it would probably be a created based upon me character. Mm -hmm. So like, if Disney ever creates like a rapping, you know, giraffe or something, then that would be like. You know, that'd be <laughs> a, 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 a rapping giraffe. I'll have to keep that in mind. And then the boys can um, check you out as a rapping giraffe. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, but, you know, there's always the potential. Like you said, never, never close your doors. Never, never close an, uh, an opportunity. Always chase it. Right. So mm -hmm. uh, I, I feel what you must have. Yeah. Got must. the Yoda thing. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> Upper so is, it, is that part of your voiceover stuff? Is that part of your, is that part of the, the voiceover part of you? Well, I, I've actually done some characters, but it's been a while back. I can imitate characters. I can create my own. But of right, course, right. I, have, I haven't been approached to like, you know, creating a character. But I'm glad you mentioned it. I'm going to start branching out into creating some characters. So, and I was told that you have to um, copyright, you got to market, you got to license yeah, yeah. and really protect and of course, you know, internet, they can just take anything. But to be on the safe side, it's you just learn to protect your own stuff. So that's what I'm looking to do. And I'm glad we're coming up with some um, creative ideas. I'm writing this uh, right now as we speak. So I have to say so. So my work is never done. I got to say that. Thanks to you, which is great. <laughs> I Like I said, I, I there's, you know, there's other things that I, you know, want to do so desperately. You know, we've all got our other options that we've always dreamt about. You know, I wanted to, to write a, um, a cartoon for like a cartoon book for kids, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you know, different things. You know, I mean, so in in your life what what were some of the things that you never thought you because you talked about a bucket list right so right. what were some of the things that you never thought you were gonna do that you actually got to do some of the, like the wildest moment type things well i have to say this is that um I, i'm gonna release it right now that i did before and i was in a in a different frame back then that i always wanted to be on a game show and uh -huh. i instead of like you know watching cartoons when i'm sick I turn on game shows. I'm like, I can do better than these guys. You know, yeah, the Joker's yeah. Wild, Hollywood Squares, Price is Right. But I'm not, ah! you know, Jeopardy. running down and jiggly and everything else. You know, I'll just follow on with Jeopardy. But Wheel of Fortune actually was the one I was on in 2005 where I saw the I saw the letters and, and my wife, Serena, looked at me and goes, you should be on that show. And then, surprisingly enough, that they had an advertisement, the Wheelmobile's coming to your town near you. And I said, okay, well, I'm going to do it. She says, get online and do it. And so I go ahead, go online. I'm like, I'm never going to get on. It's like there's a million people out there crazier than I am. And it's like the chances are like winning the lottery. And so here it was. I get an email back and saying all the wheelmobiles come to Chicago. I'm like, okay, great. And it's coming. And it was around Sunday, about to go to church. I says, should I go to church? I should I do the wheelmobile. said, Go wheelmobile, and, and I couldn't take everybody because they're all too young and 
whatever else. And so I went down there and first time didn't get in. And everybody's like, come on, go to the next one, get next one. And call and call my wife screen goes, shut again. He goes, yeah, go. And so I get on and here and I do a little something where I accidentally dog eared and just put it in. And I was like, OK. And then the guy picks it up. It's like, that looks like a dog ear. And he goes, it was mine. Called me on stage. And then I got there, did a thing where I solved the puzzle. And I didn't go crazy. I just, you know, a little bit here, a little bit there. And they're like, hey, great. We'll call you. I'm like, OK, thank you. And so I got a thing in the mail and said, OK, you're invited to come down. And this is what you do. I'm like, great. So I drive down. And there was another lady that was with me that did the same thing. She didn't make it. But then going through the process and where it's like, I got the solve, you hey, great, you know, put on the juice and everything. And then I did great on that. And you take a final test. You have to do it in so much time. Now I went, oh, crap, I blew it. Oh, and there I was, okay, that's it. And then they called 20 people and he rattled off the names, 20th person. And she called my name. I went, God. <laughs> so I was in and we did the actual game. And then they said, okay, we'll put you on the list. We'll let you know. And I was like, okay, great. And get a letter. And they invited me to go to Las Vegas for a live show. And still the studio, it was Las Vegas. And so took my wife with, kids were young. And so a little getaway, get on stage. And as it turned up, they did the tapings. And so here I was, I'm going to have a great time. And so long story short was that I got on the show I didn't get to meet Val. That was my biggest regret. But I managed to solve the last puzzle. Solve West Highland White Terrier, East Lansing, Michigan, where I was from. Eleven thousand one hundred fifty bucks. That was back in two thousand five. Yes, I, I never thought I'd be on a game show. All right, that's that's very cool. Very cool. In fact, in fact, I I think you're the only person I've ever met who's ever officially been on a game show. <laughs> oh, thank you. I appreciate. It. And th and there was a there was a classmate of mine whose uh, husband was on the, the Bozo show back up in oh, Chicago really? and, and uh, actually, you know, dropped the ball in bucket number six. And I think he won a bike or something. And one of my best friends, um, Marty, he, uh, he came close, but it was like, yeah, those, uh, those arrows that came around, he was like maybe two people away. And that was like his close to getting on. So I I've actually, you know, I talked to a few people, some don't make it out of the gate and some, you know, make it all the way. But I just have to say that, I, I have no interest in winning trips or prizes. I just want the money. That's it. And so this way, you don't have to pay the taxes. <laughs> I, I think that's uh, in, in that, like Jerry Maguire, just show me the money, man. <laughs> there you go. J just show me the money. Show me the money. More money. Oh, more, money. Money. <laughs> <laughs> more money. More money. More <laughs> money. Uh, okay. So let's let's move on a little bit. So now you, you've got, you've obviously got a family and you've got, uh, you know, your personal life and everything. How, how, uh, how has it been for you mixing the 35 years of radio and broadcasting, um, which I know firsthand because I've, I've, I'm in five years now, um, mm -hmm. is, is more costly than it is income based. You like it, you, you understand what I mean? Like that you're, you're, you're in the red more than you're in the black. Um, and so, as a family, from my point of view, it's 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 been trying a tricky balance between the two. How did you sail through and make it through that? It's it's simple. Time management. That's what it is. My dad taught me time management. It's like you can do this in 10 minutes, you can do this in 5, 20, whatever it is. And of course, yeah, I may be doing this, but I'll spend a little time with you. Sit down, schedule a block of time and everything. And of course, you know, I, I've worked full-time jobs before too, but then what kept me going is that I did sports production where I just simply just run run the board for uh, whatever game, you know, baseball, football, basketball. It can be like, you know, your local sports or college or like the pros, you know, I've done I've done it all play-by-play play and I, I managed to schedule out where it's like, I can do this and afterwards, hey, we can do this, go here, go there, whatever else. And man, there are times I control my schedule and there are times like, you know, I'm needed and they're like, you know, okay, let's take a break and every everything like that. So I kept up a lot of things just to make it fit here, fit there, everything like that. And and of course, if, if you're in the business in radio to make a million dollars, you're in the wrong business. But if you really love what you're doing and you're called to do it, then job, you, job. it's 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 not it's not a job. It's just what the Geico lizard says. It's what you love doing. That's the thing. Uh, I, I, so 
I'm, I'm a little conflicted and torn. I'm one of those that um, I don't do the radio for the money because there's really none involved. I mean, there is, but it's it, there's other ways of making more money that are less requiring, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, I found that it was one of those things that when I'm in the mood to want to be that, I do it wonderfully. But when those times that I tried to push myself and I didn't feel like that that was the moment for me, then I, I didn't do it very well, right? So I figured the best way, like you said, was to fill it up, right? Fill it up with different things, different activities, different, you know, different ways of going about it, which obviously, you know, I'm the hip hop entertainer and I, and I mm -hmm. do videos and things like that, which is why it all came a collective. So right. for you, so for you, you have these, you have these branchings that all kind of mold together of those, which one would you say defines Mike Wagner the best? I would probably say the Mike Wagner show and also, you know, being in radio, playing music. You know, it can be hip-hop, country, rock, the greatest songs of all time, oldies or jazz or public radio or even uh, Christian or religious music or anything like that. I've done just about everyone. And, of course, R&B and, and, and whatever else it's like. That's what pretty much defines me as a person and lending my voice to whatever project. And I was also approached by some people that, you know, I'm, you know, looking to do some games. And my my boys are right now working on a gaming project and they have me do a couple of voices. And I did some voice work for my wife, Serena, and a couple of books that she did. And, you know, of course, my son up in Chicago did voice work for him and helped my daughter, Sarah, who's a musician, did some work and mom and dad and helped them out and everything. My my family, friends, and wherever I can just lend a hand. So I, I think it's just more about me. It's just like, you know, microphone per se. It's like, no matter what, you know, me with a microphone just um, defines me. It's like somebody remembers, like, what's your name again? It's Mike, as in microphone. And, of course, if I were to die, it would, it would take on a new meaning of dead air. I die with my microphone. That's my deal of death. That's great. That's great. Uh, so – microphones you're you, you you you've been in this world so long what 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 do you feel about the streaming and these the news these new in microphones and and uh uh you know the way the world is today with entertainment i mean how you you've seen the changes you you walked along and progressed that road as it winded and came to where it is present day what did you feel of this journey what do you think of the different ways that the world has become streaming <laughs> mm -hmm. i i think technology has gotten better as time goes on because back in the day it's like you are like this big microphone this big studio with these huge knobs and whatever else and these big rooms and big windows and everything and then it's just reduced down to the size of like your um your office desk it's almost like you know you know just a little computer and you got a powerful microphone and you also uh -huh. got you know tiny speakers and everything else it's like it's gotten so tiny, but it's almost like compact. Next thing you know, it's, you'll, you'll be doing a uh, radio show from a phone or from a Dick Tracy wristwatch back in the day. You can do a radio <laughs> station from, like, Dick Tracy. You know, back in those days, I looked at him like, oh, my gosh, that could be me in the future. Dick Tracy talking to somebody <laughs> on a wristwatch. Actually, that is possible now, too, though. It really is. Speaking of. You, you, you're talking about how condensed everything has gotten and, and, you know, I don't, obviously you can't see, I have a lot of my collectibles and things in here along with my, my work stuff, but, you know, my mixer is, is, is that big, you know, it's, it's about that big. Um, mixers used to be like monstrous. Um, you know, I've got a, I've got a green screen that covers the whole walls over here, but you know, nowadays you can put a a green cardboard behind you and do the exact same thing that it costs to have this full setup. So I, I, I do you feel like being condensed has gotten really better or do you feel like it's kind of the lazy man's way of doing it? I think it can go both ways. It's like, in a sense, it's kind of like a double-edged sword. It's like, you know, technology has gotten better, but people rely too much on technology. But then it's just like the equipment to have is, is much better. But then it can also create, you know, 
you know, lazy talent out there who don't use it or some people just abuse it. But so it can go either way, but it all depends on how, what direction you want to go. And going back to what you said about there are days, I don't feel like, you know, doing this or doing that. And in my years in broadcasting, there are days I just don't have it. You know what I was told? Fake it. Suck it up. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Fake it. It's like, you know, you know, act, act like you're having fun, but then your days are like, you know, Oh, I don't feel so good. And, Whatever else in their days I came in, it's just like, oh, I remember coming in one day where I got called in serious emergency, and I was like this, just running the board with sports. I was just in a blanket. I had the chills. It was like, good God, maybe like 105 fever, and here I had some hot drinks and cough syrup and everything, and then I had to go next door to fill a shift, and all I did was just put on automation. I'll get up and speak, you know, just minimal and I'll just be resting on the floor while three songs are playing, get up, speak, and fu- and lay back down. And my engineer one time looked and said, what are you doing sleep? I says, I'm resting. I'm not feeling great because you guys may be coming. He goes, okay. <laughs> so, as long as you're here. There you go. That's right. So, so, so yeah, so it's like, I mean, the technology is great and everything else. It's just how you use it. That's the thing. It's how you use it. So in your journeys along through this road that we talk about, what are some of the downfalls that you think have happened? You know, what are, what are some of the um, technological or entertainment woes that have kind of stopped us or hindered us? I, I think when it comes to radio that, where everything is all, um, you know, national. You don't have the local DJs per se, you know, given like the local weather or, you know, ticket giveaway to a local concert. Everything's all national. Yeah, and yeah. Um, er- everything is like, you know, all voice tracked. And of course, nowadays it's like you have one jock just voice tracking for like, you know, hundreds of stations. You know, back in the day, you know, station managers will say, you know, how, you know, you know, what can you do for me? And um, let's hear your voice and everything else. Can you do this and do that? Nowadays, it's like, how many stations can you voice track for us for um, for, for such and such? You, you know, that's the thing. So it's almost like the one-on-one, in a sense, is gone. But then, you know, people these days just learn to listen to the radio a lot different. And, and I noticed they're more from the music nowadays. So they're looking into that. And if they want the information, they used to get from a local jack. Nowadays, they can just go online and pick it up or just, you know, go on your phone, fingertips, laptop, or your iPad and what have you. It's like everything's all at your fingertips these days. Do you miss have, – have, so first I should ask you this. Have you done live shows? Have you done shows that were in front of crowds and stages and, and things like that? I, I've done that as a mobile DJ back then when uh, I didn't have a radio gig. I took up, um, you know, being an MC for like weddings, parties, business events, and whatever else. And I wasn't afraid to get up there and, um, you know, just to entertain the crowds and, you know, shake hands, kiss babies, and what, whatever else. I've done some of that work, and I've also done some plays. I've done some uh, volunteer readings. So I've gotten up on stage before too. And like I said, you know. 2,000 people nowadays or 5,000, it's no problem for me whatsoever. It's like Wheel of Fortune. It's like being uh, being a theater just like instead of 100, it's like 2,000 people in Las Vegas and being, being exposed by over 10 million viewers. I, it got the point. It's like it's nothing these days. All right, so let's let's switch gears a little bit. Let's let's go off into to a little bit more of the personal life. Now, you you were born where? Milwaukee, Wisconsin, 1964, and I lived in Racine nine months um, later. My parents moved over there because it was the um, the cheapest place to live at the time. My dad worked for Mobile Oil, and he traveled three states, and 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 then uh, he got tired after nine years going from three states and heading back. We ended up moving to Hoffman Estates, which is like nor- northwest suburb of Chicago, remote office, and he can just you know go up here, go there, less miles, come home, and whatever else. And my mom is a registered nurse and later became um, a counselor. And so, I mean, you had two very hardworking parents. And of course I had three sisters growing up. I'm the only boy, which is great. I mean, while they fought, I had everything myself. I'd sit back and watch the fun, along with dogs and cats and everything else. So, so I I lived there, you know, for 30 years, went to school at Southern Illinois and spent a couple of years in backtrack, spent three years at Harper college. That's where I got started in radio back in 1982. And then, 
I came, we came to Bismarck in 2007. I got recruited by an aerosol consulting firm. So that's how it all came about. So it's just 30 years in Chicago and then came up and everything's been great ever since. And how many, how many kids? I got, we got four kids. Four kids, four kids. All right. So you've, you've been in these different atmospheres and you've got a, a fairly decent sized family. Four kids nowadays is what we consider to be a, a fairly larger family. Uh, do you feel like you're you're gonna retire in Hawaii, or do you feel like you're always gonna live here with your family? Like, are you is is that the you you the family bubble kind, or are you the I'm doing this and then eventually once my kids are gone and my family I'm gonna I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna do my, my wife and I we're gonna do our own thing. Well, that well, we're gonna be there for our kids always because Obviously. you know one day they'd be grandkids, so we just want to yeah. be there, support, and if something happens, you can just come back to us and everything else. So, so, so I I have to say this is that you know we'll we'll be here for a while, and if God wants us in another place, you know, so be it. So you know we're always there for the kids. We love them very much, and you know just um, encourage them to come out, visit, and um, be there for advice and everything else. And you know I encourage my kids to grow and just do what they really really love you know that's a whole thing so it's like you know do what you really love to do that's what i was gonna ask let's just say uh what is some of the advice that you give to your kids that you feel like is beneficial for people listening the one thing i have to say that best advice i always ask this question and i might answer my own question is use your talent what god has given you Use them to the best of the ability and for him, for his kingdom, and also for providing to, um, you know, what the world offers and everything else. So God's giving you, like, you know, a number of talents, and it's up to you to use them properly. And that's what he asks you to do. And, and so if you go, go back in the chapter as well, too, that, you know, one man was given um, ten talents. And he goes, get out there and use it. One man's given five. One man's given one. And the one that did the ten talents, and he's like, you know, hey, congratulations, good job. And then one with five talents and grew more. And, um, you know, they're like, hey, good job. And then one talent, they buried it. You know, they got punished and uh, sent away. So I just tell people, don't abuse the talents or bury them. Use them wisely. And, and you'll be basically just blessed. And you'll be, you'll be thanked and whatever else. And so, what I, and, and for people that don't know their talents, I mean, you go out there and just search for yourself. Has someone searched for you? Or or seek advice, spiritual or whatever, or get professional help to do so. You know, uncover your talents, uncover your skills, and, and just take take a personal inventory and what you can do and what you can't do, and then you just find your niche. So basically, use your talents to the best ability. I tell everybody that. So uh, what would you say to those who would be – searching for their talents and and i I know you kind of touched on this you said you know ask for help seek for help what what about uh you know uh those who may feel like they um they they want to change what their talents might be you know what i mean by that let me i'm trying to see if i can say this a better way what would you say to those who maybe are in a position that they're in and they're using their talents but they're like you know i wish i could do something else you know what though I have to say is don't be afraid to try something else because that could be it. There could be a hidden talent deep somewhere and it may come up. So like say if you're an office job and you're like, you know, okay, I've done this, but I want to do something else and get say transfer to another apartment, another branch, or leave all together, another talent could eventually pop up and it could be like it could be an offshoot of what you're doing. So it could be another direction. So I would have to say is that. When it, when it comes to talents, something else could pop up or it could be extension of that talent or the extension of an extension of an extension of an extension. You know, you know, that's how I look at it, too. You never know until you walk it. What's that? You said you never know until you walk it, right? That's right. Yeah. Or, or what's in your pocket, too. Yes. <laughs> All right. With just a few minutes left that we have, I, 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 I kind of want to just, uh, you know, ground out coming back to the Mike Wagner show and, and, and touching base on, you know, how can people find you, follow you? And, and you know, I know you have your radio version of, of, a, of a little promo thing, and I want to give you the chance to do that as well. But 
before we, we get into all of that, I, I want to know for you personally, what has been the best experience about just the Mike Wagner show? The best experience is talking to great people like you and all people on all walks of life. You know, great people like you. I've had people on my show. The people are on my, that get on my show, including you, are always a blessing. I mean, you get to know them. You know, you love them. And you want to get to, like, say, get to the point of maybe go to dinner with them, go out for a beer or something like that. You and, want to see them succeed. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. And that's what I'm here to do. And, of course, you talked earlier as well, too, that, you know, there's like, you know, so much negativity out there. That was one of the biggest reasons why I started the Mike Wagner show. I got so tired of all the negativity out there in radio shows, podcasts, TV, and everything else. It's like kind of bring back like a Johnny Carson, Dick Cavett type of deal. You have a guest sit down, talk about themselves, and shine a light on them. It's like, what's coming up? What can you do? And oh, where can we find you and everything? Yes. Good conversation. Yes, that's right. And that and that's what we're here for, too. It's like just get away from all the madness and just have some coffee, too, just like we're doing right now as we say. Crack me up with your coffee. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 I know another guy. I know another guy. His name's Paul Weir, Paul Weirsgala, and uh, he's out of Wisconsin, I think. Oh, and, really? My neck of the woods. Have yeah. him uh, say hello to me sometime. I, I will definitely. I, you know what? I'll, I'll actually, uh, on Twitter, I'll, I'll introduce the two of you guys and, and let it go from there. Um, he, he's also a musician. He's got a great story. He owns a, he owns a cafe shop that's a, it's a, a coffee shop. But it's a music spot. So you, you come in for your coffee and there'll be a live act playing off in the corner. Mm -hmm. uh, but he, he has that same diehard belief about coffee. I mean, he has got to have his coffee, right? So uh, I, I think that anything that makes you, you know, like anything that has an addictive nature is, is not necessarily the best thing for you. <laughs> well, think, what? Coffee does have its benefits. I gotta say that, but that'll be for another time. So, <laughs> but anyways, how can people find the Mike Wagner show? How do they tune in? You know, how if, if people want to learn more? Well, they can go to uh, www.themikewagnershow.com, and one of my guys is um, from Sonic Web Studios, who's my uh, proud sponsor. Is, is going to update the website very soon. You can also find the Mike Wagner Show on Facebook, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, and iHeartRadio. Also on Anchor FM, iTunes, Radio Public, Google, and also on, on the on the Mike Wagner Show, over 25 podcast platforms. Take the Mike Wagner Show at the end. Any mobile device, subscribe to the Mike Wagner Show on the YouTube channel. Also follow the Mike Wagner Show on Instagram and Twitter today. And stay tuned to the Mike Wagner Show on Facebook for any updates. And I'm looking to add more outlets as well, too. And stay tuned for all that. Of course, of course, of course. And of course, you can check out the Mike Wagner feature, Mike Wagner show feature over at the FCR247.com platform where a click will take you to instant access to any of his shows. And we are working on coding so that like there's this, like there'll be this box that you click on and you can listen to your past episodes too and we'll fill that up. I think it holds like 20. So it'll be a nice little addition. You know, I'm trying to do that make it more interactive for people to actually pay attention and listen and learn instead of click here to click here to click here. Right. Makes it yeah, kind of like loses its clicks after a while. Right. So, right. Right. Ex exactly. And the one thing right now is that um, you can tune into the Mike Whitener show on FCR 24 com with Twiz and White Peace. And also check out Twiz and White Peace, the great Twiz and White Peace on FCR 24 com. You're, you're so amazing. You, you're so just natural with it. I love it. I love it. <laughs> I do. I love it. I love it. And, and, and you're amazing, too, with amazing people. It's like, you know, we got to get out as well, too. And, of course, um, taking a White Sox game as well, too, and, uh, and I, the Bulls. You know, until they open these borders, because right now I'm back in Toronto, Canada. So until they open these borders, they're, we're just stuck. You know, it's been a back and forth thing. You know, it seems like right now everybody just wants to – be in an argument for some reason. <laughs> Trudeau, <laughs> Trudeau and Trump right now are just not doing the best. I don't know if, uh, you know, it, it seems like it's one of those, uh, you remember back in the classroom where, where you got into the line by alphabetical, like your name, uh -huh. and, and you'd always be like, ha ha, I'm in front of you to the person behind you. Right. So it seems like Trudeau and Trump are like stuck in a line with each other and they just want to bicker back and forth while they're in that line. It's just so frustrating. 
Oh, so. oh, oh, I'll tell you. And, and I think probably the best way to sell it is either by playing soccer or playing hockey. And sometimes that's the best way to sell disagreements. You, you know, just play soccer or play hockey. Or, you know, there's a Monty Python skit, which uh, John Cleese does a five-minute argument. I'm here to argue with you. No, you don't. Yes, you do. No, you don't. Yes, you do. Have like a five-minute argument like Monty Python. I, you know, I, I was thinking just the old-fashioned uh, Red Rover, Red Rover, send Trudeau right over. Red Rover, Red Rover. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, there you go. I, I don't know how that'll go, but if, I don't if Trump tried to do that, he'll probably get met by hockey pucks. Who knows? Probably. You never know. I don't know. Anyways, Mr. Wagner, thank you so much for, of course, being on this show. And, of course, you're going to get a copy of this and everything as well. And we'll get this promoted and put on YouTube and whatnot. We just want to thank you for taking the time out and, and you know, letting us know a little bit more about you and the things that you've been through. And, and some of the, you know, bucket list. I love your bucket list. That, 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 that's, that's great. I love it. I, I think everybody should have a bucket list. If you're not aspiring to do something in life, you're going to do absolutely nothing. So dreams and hopes and bucket lists, those are the things that make your life worthwhile and make it worth living. Because then you can look back and say, you know, I did this. I've done that. I've been here. I've been there. So I commend you on your positive, outgoing never never quitting never stopping way of life that that's that's to be commended and of course the mike wagner show is an amazing um display of broadcasting ability i think you the way you're able to to weave in and out of conversations with different people and different situations and different subjects is is to be uh, it's it's a work of art almost so congratulations on that and i wish you 300 to 600 more interviews all of which are just equally as amazing if not more amazing and you know if you had any last words to tell the entire world before before the entire world exploded what would they be <laughs> before the entire world exploded well i can say this if the entire world were explorer play rems it's it's the end of the world as we know it and i feel <laughs> fine or come up with like a radio station. What's the last song you want to play? And most importantly, think on your feet as well, too, because not everybody's going to do it for you. Think on your feet. Always listen to people. Always show attention to detail and care and everything else. And there's one thing I'm going to say, Twizzle and White Peace. You've got a fantastic show. And I really thank you for your time. You've been great. And looking forward to having you again soon. And do us a favor. Keep us up to date. And I'll be glad to keep up to date with you. And I encourage you to... to do 300 more episodes. And if you catch up with me in a heartbeat, I will commend you as well, too. So I encourage you to keep it going as well, too, just like Sonic the Hedgehog as well. Yeah. <laughs> all right, brother. Thank you so much. And, of course, like I said, I'll get all this information to you in just a little while. FCR My pleasure. Two, FCR 247, this was an interesting interview with the fantastic man known as the Mike Wagner Show. And, of course, you can catch this live on FCR 247 at FCR247.com slash listen. And we'll have playbacks on YouTube as well at our FCR 247 channel. This show was brought to you in association with a plethora of people such as BRRS Media, Big Bang Wayne, and the Big Bang Wayne show known as Sweet Euro Trash. And of course, man, the Jimmy Star Show with World Star PR. Jimmy Star Show with Ron Russell and World Star PR. We thank you. We wish you a great night. And remember to stay super saucy. Focused on getting money, God first, family over everything. And until we see you again, hit the website and be blessed in your steps.